So today, we are going to meet up with my speaking coach. And as a professional speaker, it's really good to have a coach and really good to evaluate uh, what's coming out of my mouth and how it's coming out of my mouth and the whole presentation because it's so easy to get caught up in a rut and do the same old thing. Like Sometimes I feel like even when when I try to vary things up, it's the same old presentation, so I'm hoping today to gain some new insight into things that I can improve to make it more effective, and you know, it's going to make it better for the audience, and it's going to make it better for me, so it's a real win. So I'm super excited, and uh, hope everything turns out okay. So we got to talk about my introduction, or my opening. And I just want to say one of the things that I learned when I started out speaking was that the most important part of your speech is the first 30 seconds and the final 30 seconds. And for me, I, I've done a few different things when I introduce myself or open my speech. I sometimes step out to the front of the stage and actually just pause, moment of silence. Learn that from Broadway, actually. Hmm. That really gets the audience to focus in on me. Sometimes I go right into a story about something that happen that day that's relevant to them, but other times I kind of just wing it. So I'm really not totally sure what to do for the opening of my presentation. And I talk about mental health, uh, transforming stigma. Sure. I share my story and some ways to go about transforming stigma. Any thoughts on how I can go about crafting that nice piece of bread for the opening? Well, I'm glad you remember that because that's very important, yeah. right? It's intentional your opening story has to set the foundation for the rest of your presentation. Okay. And in that first bite, that first morsel, that first taste you're giving your audience, you have to set them up so they understand how they're gonna go from the beginning to content piece one, content piece two, content piece three, or however many content pieces you have, and then conclude. So that first story has to transition perfectly into the rest of your presentation. And it depends. It depends on who your audience is. It depends on the goal of your presentation. Some of the stories that you should share at the beginning should be those personal stories yeah. that connect directly to the theme of the event, the theme of the conference, the theme of the seminar. Some stories shouldn't be personal. Some stories should be more of a workplace story or a story that the audience can relate to, not necessarily about the theme of the event. Both work for different kinds of reasons. The personal obviously shows that you have a personal investment in what's going on. Mm -hmm. The non-personal approach shows your ability to be a storyteller, to wet their palate, if you will, for the next bite into the core content of your presentation. Okay. What do you think would be the best fit for, you know, in your mind for a starting presentation? For So, being that I talk about mental health and the stigma around it, which for many people who don't know, stigma is about a mark of shame that exists around the whole subject. Um, I start with going to the gym. So, let's pretend I'm in a presentation. I come out, yay, welcome Mike to the stage. I was in the gym several years ago, working out. And I was doing push-ups in the gym. And it was one of those push-up routines where you put your arms in different positions. And I thought I was pretty cool doing my little push-up routine. And honestly, I was trying to impress this girl that was in the gym too. Well, I ended up hurting my wrist somehow. And I totally played it off. And I had to quickly get myself out of the gym and go home and deal with my wrist. And I knew right away I should ice my wrist because it was either a strain, a sprain, or a broken wrist. After three days, if it's not feeling better, call a doctor, get an x-ray. It's pretty simple. Mental health challenges don't work like that. Typically, they are discovered in a confusing and complex way through someone else discovering it for you in your behavior. And that's how I open my speech before I go into talking about mental health and what it is. Is that the speech that you use 
for every one of your mental health events? No. no. Okay. That's typically ones where they're more of community organizations, social work organizations, mm -hmm. where I'm just giving an overview of the subject of mental health. Okay. And do you include in that story the part about trying to impress the young lady in the room? Yes, I do. <laughs> okay, good. Good, good. So the reason why I ask that is because in doing that, right, you open yourself up to being comical, right? Okay. Adding some levity, right? Mm -hmm. Even to the idea of you know, just working out and like, oh, there's the attractive person in the room. Let me show them how tough I can be, right? Mm -hmm. How I'm a big man. I can do my push-ups in this direction, in this direction, in this direction, and then you hurt yourself. Yes. Right? So I think what you're identifying in this opening story, right? And this is, I've, I've heard versions of this story before, but in thinking about it, it's a powerful start to show your audience that being vulnerable and owning up to some of the hiccups or flaws or problems that you're coming to, right? It, that it's okay to address those problems mm. and it's okay to find help for those problems. So your opening story gives your audience a sense that you're a good storyteller, you bring in levity, some humor, some funniness, right? To show that you can tell a good story, you can engage the audience. It also brings a dimension to your overall story, which is if we're going to destigmatize mental illness, we first have to realize that we do have a problem that needs to be addressed. And it's not something you should shake off or mm. ignore or anything like that, right? Just like when you hurt your wrist, you know you had to go run and get some help for it, right? Ah, so I can connect it back to that. Exactly, okay. right? And what it does is, and your audience may not be aware of this, and that's okay. Okay? Your audience is there to observe and hear your story. But in adding those intricate layers that show a sense of what you're thinking about, and not just telling a story, but you're setting them up for more to come, right? And you transition beautifully into this idea of when it comes to mental illness, there's not always a place to go. It's not always a thing to do right away, right? But you're emphasizing the fact that it is important, just as important as hurting your wrist, okay? It is important to go find those resources. And maybe I should keep that in mind, I guess, from what you're saying when I'm getting to the end of that story. Yes. I also, um, depending on how much time you have, mm -hmm. you should expand on some of the more comical moments, some of the more detailed moments. How can I do that? I was actually thinking about that before. I'd love to do that. How well, would... again, it's based on how much time you have, right? Yeah. If you're giving a 20-minute presentation and you have to hit five different components of a presentation, right? Well, you only really have four minutes for that opening, right? Yeah. Four minutes for your opening, four minutes for content, four minutes for content, four minutes for content, and then you know, four minutes to end it. Right? And, and so there's no way to really determine a set length of time for an opening to a presentation. It has to be adjusted. So maybe what I should do, again, what I'm learning from you is have re rehearse that opening in different time frames. Right. Give yourself some of the content time in the opening story or some of that content time in the ending story or vice versa. Take away some of the, con the uh, story time and apply it more towards content. But that depends on your audience too. If you're in an audience with more practitioners or a clinical audience, they might want more content, mm -hmm. right? How you see the world of mental illness, the destigmatization of mental illness, how you see it and how they should apply it, right? Got it. The story aspect, while still important and savory, just like that first piece of bread, right? You're still building your sandwich, right? It's important, but it doesn't have to be Texas toast. Right? It could be a very thin, delicious layer. So, so, so back to your sandwich. Building your sandwich. It's got to be the right sandwich for the right audience. The ingredients have to mesh up. They have to jive with each other. Absolutely. So when you're telling an opening story, it very much depends on who your audience is. And it also depends on how much time you have to tell that story. Also, you have to make sure, no matter how much time you have or who is in the audience, you have to layer that opening story as a perfect transition into the core reason why you're there, the content. Awesome. Thank you so much. Sure.